Okay. I want to talk about Marlin. Uh, Model 1894 I just got. First, I'm going to do a uh, shameless uh, commercial for SIG. I got a SIG P365. Uh, and I had some videos on it. This gun, I'm so impressed with it for a short breath gun. It, it is so accurate. It outshoots me any day uh, on targets. And uh, with SIG's reputation for reliability, I just, I'm really happy I got it. You know, I was looking at the uh, Hellfire and uh, maybe one or two other ones, but I ended up going with the SIG. I really like, and anyway, you can watch the other video if you want to hear about it, but uh, anyway, okay, yeah, so this is my 1894 I got. Uh, it's supposed to be made in 79, I haven't checked the show number yet, but uh, anyway, it's a beautiful gun. I had a blast shooting it. I shot about four tubes of magazines in it, and then it just started jamming no matter what, period, jammed. And so I did a little bit of research on the internet. I think I've got an idea what's going on. I've never had one of these before, messed with it. I did take it apart the other day and look at it, and I think I kind of got the internals figured out. Uh, I was gonna show you here what it does. Uh, the first, first what I got here, this thing, uh, of course, when you pull the lever back, the bolt goes back and forth. And down here, there's a, uh, uh, what the heck, the uh, bolt block. So when it's, when it's right up the last position, there's a little block goes in, locks the bolt, bolt lock, I guess, bolt lock, locks it in place. So you got that going on with the bolt. And then also what you got going on is uh, when you pull it open, the carrier, so it's hard to see because all the, because all the mechanisms, but it's, I'm calling this the carrier. It lifts the, the bullet up. When the carrier is just resting right now on a radius on this on this lever. And, and when the lever is closed all the way, you can see this bolt is something's pushing it down real far. There's a little tab here that sticks through the bottom of the frame. This tab, I think, is part of what blocks the, the, the second bullet from entering the chamber when it's up. Uh, but anyway, as soon as you pull this bolt up, you can see that pops up a little bit. And then this lever kind of goes beside the carrier. There's a spring-loaded uh, mechanism on the side of the carrier. The bolt kind of goes beside it, and the carrier just stays down. And in this position, it's all the way, all the way uh, extended. There's kind of a little corner on this that is sitting up and holding this the, the carrier. And apparently, and I looked at this, there's a little shiny spot worn where where that carrier sits and, it, and it's worn down a little bit. And the fix for that is to put a little bit of a radius on this, uh, on the little sharp edge, and then to uh, weld in your displaced metal or heat your bolt, heat your carrier and uh, spring it up a little bit. I've got a weld, a MIG welder, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do the weld fix. But you can see coming forward that uh, lifts up, and then it, it lets the bolt push the bullet in, and then when it goes down and drops way down like this, I think it's supposed to let the next bullet kind of partially enter and be queued up uh, to load. So uh, anyway. Okay, sorry, I almost forgot where I was. Uh, okay, yeah, so, so I'm gonna load it here. Uh, and at this point, you can see what's holding the, bu the bullet, or the cartridge is kind of this, this uh, loading gate. And you really can't push it up in there with your finger to get it up past the carrier anyway. So I think in this position, you're supposed to maybe have one bullet partly in As you can see it right there and there's no way to push it any further so I think that's normal and then when you pull this lever uh, this first cartridge should come out but the second cartridge should be stopped so I didn't pay a lot of attention as while I was working but when it quit working you know I got real curious as to how to fix it so anyway, I'm gonna pull it here
Okay. Okay. And it would work this time for me. Okay, I'm gonna eject the shell over here on the Okay. Well. Okay. Try again. Yeah, and these are live shells and I'm pointing at the uh, wall there. Hopefully, uh, I'll retain my senses and not have to do any housework. Okay. Okay, so I don't know what the heck's going on. I uh, looked at it, looked at it, fiddled with it. I didn't want to work on it until I really knew what I thought I knew what I was doing. And I convinced myself, <laughs> convinced myself I was going to fix it and I knew what to do. Okay, so got one in the chamber. So here we're just gonna. These are the shells that was jamming on me, and I tried every, three or four different shells. These are factory shells. I tried my reloads. I don't think it's got anything to do with the bullets' shape of the head, or was it being a thirty-eight versus a three fifty-seven? Because I can see it's impossible to get the bullet way up there. So from the get-go, this has to be approximately the right place for the bullet to be. Okay. I hate throwing my ammo all around. Okay. Okay, so, okay, we're clear. Okay, uh, I'm still going to take it apart and work on it. Uh, just as preventative medicine, I'm going to take and round off this lever a little bit and then fill in the divot on this. I was going to actually fill in the divot and add a little bit of metal because this lever is pinned, uh, back here. The carriage is pinned on this bolt. So the carriage raises and lowers and it's resting on this. So where it rubs, I was going to like add about five thousandths material when I weld it just to make it sit a little bit higher. Dang. Okay. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to get other ammo. I couldn't have fixed it by just taking it apart and putting it together. Okay, sorry, I'm back. I got wad cutters. Part of my original theory was that maybe the wad cutters were too short, so the second uh, the second bullet in the magazine was just too far back because of that. But we'll see here. And what's weird is it would jam on every single bullet, no matter what. Once it had the first jam, and every time it jammed, you got to take the lever off. So then, then and get you know, open it, take the lever off, and then it would it would let it clear. But then I put it back together, and it would jam up again. Okay. Okay. Ah, there now it's jamming. It jammed. Okay, it just jammed. Okay, with my wad cutter, but this wad cutter, uh, it's in a 357 shell, so it's a little long, it's a longer shell. All right. Now I'm gonna remove this uh, bolt here, take the lever off. So I have a better. Uh, better angle for you to see. It's loaded. I got a point in the safe direction. The bolt's open. You know, the hammer's blocked by the bolt. It cannot fire. It's impossible to fire until I reassemble it. What's weird is it kept the shells are just now that worked, didn't work.
a taft pin out here. Boom. And it just it just released another shelf. Oh, just kind of released here. So now there we go. The other shelf just popped in. So that's it. No more shells. Let's put this right back in. Man, it's got me bugged. Number one, I wanted to really play around and shoot this a lot for fun because uh, we got some, a lot of 38s and, and revolvers to shoot. So I was really looking forward to shooting it for fun. I don't want to jam up while I'm having my fun. And then also I thought that'd be a really good uh, defense gun. You know, 10 rounds of jacket of hollow point, 38 pluses. Would be pretty devastating from a rifle, I think. But they would still be uh, highly controllable. This here you can see. So, so my wide cutters are in, are in the 30, 357 shell. They're slightly shorter than the other load. Maybe it won't take wide cutters, except these are the ones that kept jamming. Okay, so now I got it. Get back together. Start all over. Okay. Now it's going to work it like this just to. Okay, well, okay, it's working on these. Maybe it will not take wad cutters. That might be the problem. Part of the problem. Wad cutters may be too short, uh, but it's, it's cycling the, the factory bullets fine now. Yeah, these are all, I, I did not load these because these are, uh, I, didn't, I, didn't have any, I never had bullets like that to load. This is kind of a funny looking bullet. Full, full metal jacket uh, with a flat nose, 38 special. Man, that just kind of blows my mind. Here we'll put a 38 wide cutter, excuse me, 37 wide cutter, and then a regular one. That one should work, there's nothing behind it. So now, now we'll try. Try the full metal jacket, wood cutter, full metal jacket. It's loaded, I got it pointed at my drill press. Okay, they're jammed up. First one didn't jam, second one did. Okay. Keeping a point in safe direction. It cannot fire. The bolt is back. Hammer, hammer is blocked. I hate working on guns that are loaded because uh, there's probably the one thing that's more dangerous to do than cleaning a loaded gun is working on a loaded gun. Because if you forget one second it's loaded, you have some serious trouble. So I always keep it pointed to the wall. They just make me nervous when guns are not working right, if something is malfunctioning. Then you get your brain engaged trying to solve a problem. You gotta always remember there's there's a death in that thing. Pop the pin out for the lever, and now that lets the lever kind of move down 
and it just lets them all kind of dump. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so, okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and, uh, Get that uh, pivot fixed. I'll show it to you. Okay, my bolt just fell out. Bolt just slides out without the lever. Uh, it's all self contained the uh, extractor and the, the pin. Fire pin are all in there. Uh, you got to watch out in here. The ejector and the ejector spring are just loose in there, kind of locked in, but they will come out. So you gotta watch out. Don't be caught by surprise by that. The spring goes against the outside of the gun. The ejector goes against the bolt. There's a little groove for it there. So in in your uh, in receiver, just doing this kind of a deal. You know, kicking out the uh, shell. Okay. And this here. And this here is that uh, little sharp edge, sharp radius that uh, uh, on the thread where I saw where somebody said radius set down a bit, probably uh, probably like a twenty-five thousandths radius or something to get that sharp edge off there. Because that sharp edge kind of digs into the carrier, and the carrier is just resting on this when it comes up. And it kind of sits it, but then when this goes forward, there's a piece on a carrier that the lever catches and it makes the carrier flip up. Kind of hard to show. Hopefully you're seeing it. But anyway, okay. Okay, focus. Uh get the carrier out. We gotta take the bottom off. So I got uh there that holds that plate on and oh shazam I said it's part of their dad and yeah I'm pretty sure it's this one here there's a three the three bolts that hold that one two one two yeah yeah the, the, the trigger bolt holds it also but no problems. The trigger, or the trigger screw is is uh, easy. It's just kind of got the uh, oh, you know what? I forgot. Okay, yeah. Okay, I forgot. I actually took off. Took this out. Okay, this screw takes your stock off. I got my hammer spring still under tension in there. Okay, this one's for the stock. Put it off here, okay. Hammer spring, this thing comes out pretty easy. Uh, I'm gonna man, gonna uncock it. Oh. Okay, I got it uncocked. Okay, and then this here, you can just kind of push it and pull it over. Boom, it comes out. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Okay, now, that whole 
hammer will fall out and come out. Trigger screw. Uh, or hammer screw, rather, sorry. I'm going to put that in a hammer. If I remember, it's the one for the hammer. Okay. This is the handle screw. I'm going to put it back with the handle. I really yeah, I don't have a good place to work and show it's okay. But now, now this is coming off. Okay, so this is the uh, bottom of the receiver. Now, the block comes out. It fits up in a channel. It only fits one way. And it fits like this. If you're looking at the gun, it fits this way. And, and like this. Or like, how can I, yeah, if you can see that, yeah, it's like, goes in like that. Okay, so, like that. Now, I'm going to do this other screw for the lever. I hope this lighting is good enough to see something. I'm not the most entertaining to listen to. Okay. So those screw come off, this come out, and yeah, so this is in the gun, as I'm holding the gun like this, this is hinged here, and it's sitting right here on that lever, and there's actually the little divot the guy was talking about, if you see it, right there, there's a little divot, it's not big, but uh at this point i think i'm going to go ahead and uh probably put a little weld the other option they had was just file that out flat heat this and bend it a little bit but i kind of don't want to get into heating and hammering on this thing uh it's got a little spring here and i'm not sure what you call this piece but this piece here on this side when you open your lever, the lever pushes this spring in and and does not lift the carrier. But then when you when you close the lever, this catches and flips it up until it drops back down. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is weld that a little bit, file it down, and I may leave it just about ten thousandths high and see if it works. Just have a little margin. I'm going to radius this down a little bit with some memory cloth. So I'm going to pause it while I do the actual work and then put it back together. Show it to you. Okay, I got this polished down a little bit. I don't know if you see this or not, but I got this little edge here. Just kind of slightly radiused and polished. I don't know if you can make it out. I didn't do much. I might should do more but i kind of took the edge off of it a little bit i might do oh, i don't know i might do a little more okay i'll be back okay i take a little more off i still can't tell a whole lot of difference but maybe you can see around right this edge here i kind of got it Slightly radiused, and I buffed any edges that were shiny from parts moving on them. I kind of buffed out because there's machine marks around. It may make the action a little slicker, may not, but but I got that done. And now the carrier, I'm going to uh, put a little weld in that divot there. It's not a deep divot. Uh, might be thirty thousandths wide, and I don't know. Five thousandths deep, maybe, just by eyeballing it. But I'm gonna uh, just put a little bead on that, and then file it back down, just slightly higher than it was. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got this piece here that I kind of hard to see here. But I welded in the low spot, but I, I kind of got a little grind. 
I filed out, I filed into it a little bit here, but I think it's not where it's touching anymore. So that little spot there won't matter, I don't think. Uh, it's getting late though, but I'm gonna put this back together. But I think where it was touching was kind of this high spot here. So I got it just slightly crowned. So I'm gonna put it back together. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. Trigger or a hammer. Anyway, and trigger. Let's see here. Definitely, let's see here. Let's see what's going on. So. Okay. No problem. I didn't pay attention. I put in my. Uh, I need to edit this. I put in my uh, carrier upside down. I'm getting hungry, it's getting late. Probably shouldn't have done this, but I really want to look at it. Okay, that will help. Okay, now put the hammer in. And I'm trying to put it in back. No. Okay, I'm okay. It's okay. Long day. I'm getting hungry. Okay. doing this I need to put in my uh, lock right for me okay so I'm gonna put in my bolt lock there we go just get something now doing this in the dark. I hope you can still see. Okay. So you got the floor bot or bottom back on now. Getting the hammer spraying. Okay, 
that's in. Now, don't be, don't, 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 okay, the screen for the floor plate. Hold on. This is the, there's two, two screws that hold the floor plate in. Short one goes on the side, long one goes on the bottom. Look at all these just kind of started. Okay, next one is the uh, let's put the projector. And the receiver. I'm gonna drop it in. There's a little locating pin on the bottom of the spring. Slide the bolt in slightly. Yeah. Lever. Yeah, you got the bolt pretty far back. It's going. These are not really, really not too difficult to take apart. There's another screw on this, so the other screws for the loading gate. There's a screw on the other side I ain't figured out. So at some point when I think I got this fixed, I'll just I'll probably use anti-seize compound on all the moving mechanisms or, or take a little bit of molybdenum disulfide grease and mix with some gun oil, thicken it up a little bit and put it on everything. Okay. And we got the uh, stock. So make sure I'm putting it on right. I can't. Apparently, can't see. Can't. Mess anything up. Okay, again, it's loaded, pointed the safe direction, and the factory 38's in it. Two, three, four. Shut back in at me. My fingers almost can't do that. Okay, we'll try it again here. Okay, I don't know. I think it's working. I didn't really learn anything from that. Except raising that edge should prevent it from digging into the uh, elevator. I'm oh, sorry, the carrier. Yeah, I'm tired of that. And I'll have to get some more, uh, I'll have to get me some uh, reloads that are not wide cutters. Uh, yeah, I don't, oh man, I think all my stuff's wide cutters. I'm going to load up some round nose stuff for this and try it out again. But anyway, it's a beautiful gun. Uh, that's it. Taking a part, putting together. Yeah, these two screws, I'm not sure what they're for, but this other pinhole here is the uh, ejector.
All right. Thanks for watching.